Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Inside Archaeology, where we dive into the mysteries of history and the science that uncovers them. I'm your host, Rachel, an archaeologist who's excavated and worked in Jordan, Canada, and the UK. Today, we're exploring a fascinating and urgent topic, how climate change is affecting archaeological heritage, as well as what we can learn from how our ancestors dealt with their climate and apply it to our present situation. Let's dig in. Climate change in general is not a new or recent phenomenon. Since the planet formed, it has gone through many stages of change to its climate that has challenged the various flora and fauna that have occupied the Earth. It has had a massive influence on where we are today. For example, the stabilization of temperatures after the end of the last ice age 11,700 years ago allowed Homo sapiens sapiens, aka humans, to start domesticating plants and animals, leading to the rise of a sedentary urban lifestyle, aka civilization. Another example is the mini ice age, which primarily occurred from the 16th to 19th centuries and seems to have resulted in a resurgence of witchcraft trials as people looked for someone to blame for poor crop growth, livestock survival, and increased activity of pathogens and disease. However, up until now, the climate change is something that has not been largely influenced by humans. That's not to say that we don't have an effect, but it's not something that we've had a huge effect on. This has changed since the Industrial Revolution in the 1800s, when we began to introduce impacts into the climate via the emission of greenhouse gases through the burning of fossil fuels. This anthropogenic, aka human-driven, climate change is unprecedented in history and has accelerated at an alarming rate. I'm sure many of the people watching today have a story or remember how the climate was different 10 or 20 years ago or more. For me, as a Canadian, it's how there is now no guarantee of a white, snowy Christmas in southern Ontario where I'm from. More often than not now, it's just brown, rainy, and maybe a bit mildly cold. So next comes the question of how does this impact archaeology, and why is the input of archaeologists relevant or needed in this wider topic? Well, one reason is that current climate drivers will result in changes to flora and fauna and changes in ground conditions, both on and below the surface, which will inevitably and already are affecting archeological sites. Additionally, our responses to the climate crisis impact these archeological sites. However, while our archeological deposits and historic places are vulnerable to the impacts of climate change, our knowledge and skills as archaeologists are also relevant to supporting society and adapting to a changing climate and a low carbon future. We're the people who figure out and know how we used to live before fossil fuels. So are we not then also some of the best place to advise on how we can go forward with less of a dependence on them in future? I certainly think so. Let's cover the impacts to the archaeological environment first. You've probably seen stories in the news about sites being revealed for the first time ever due to droughts or melting ice or other climate events. And while this is great in terms of we found new material and new sites, it's often a double-edged sword because there is then a scramble to record these sites that are now rapidly decaying due to their exposure to modern elements and bacteria. There are also several other ways the changing climate can potentially have on the historic environment, and I've gotten a few of these from a list made by Historic England. Hotter, drier conditions increase the risk of fire. Unpredictable and severe weather in the form of floods and storms is likely to be an ongoing issue as flood water, inundation, and saturation can damage historic buildings and design landscapes, particularly if they don't drain and stay flooded. Other factors will also affect historic buildings, increasing and varying the types of maintenance that's needed to keep them in ideal condition. Coastal erosion and rising sea levels pose another significant threat. There are some ancient settlements that were once safely inland that are now at the water's edge or underwater. Sites like these are being lost to the sea, taking with them irreplaceable knowledge. Effectively, what this translates to is that the planet's changing climate poses a risk of damaging archaeology, which was relatively safely preserved under 
or above the ground due to extremes in temperature and cycles of wetting and drying, soil saturation and shrinkage, changes to soil chemistry, contamination from microplastics, and indirect effects like stratigraphic alteration are all possible outcomes of climate change and how we currently live. Wetland sites and the organic materials that they preserve in oxygen-free conditions are particularly vulnerable. Preservation in situ, where we basically preserve something in the ground by not excavating it, will become increasingly difficult as these damaging cycles create stressful environments for archaeological remains. Because both buried archaeology and the conditions under which it survives are varied, there is not one single solution to this problem. Archaeologists are already doing our best to mitigate the impact of the above factors on the archaeological environment. Preservation efforts are crucial. This includes documenting sites with 3D scanning, relocating artifacts to safer environments, and advocating for policies that protect our cultural heritage. Innovative technologies are helping us record sites in incredible detail, creating digital archives that can be studied long after the physical sites are gone. And while the dangers posed towards archaeological material is obviously a serious concern and perhaps pales in comparison to the effect climate change already is and will continue to have on Earth's current living population, this video isn't meant to be all doom and gloom. If anything, archaeology has taught us how resilient humanity has been previously in dealing with and overcoming similar challenges in the past. Examination of the archaeological record and historical archives offer rare opportunities to observe the complex interaction between environmental and human systems under different climate regimes and at different spatial and temporal scales. The archaeology of climate change offers opportunities to identify the factors that promoted human resilience in the past and apply that knowledge gained to the present, contributing a much needed long term view to climate research. For example, archaeological perspectives are emerging as increasingly important in the context of maximizing food security for the world's growing population. The study of early farming communities provides models for sustainable food production, land and water management under a range of climate conditions that can be applied to contemporary situations. Archaeological models for this include the readoption of the Native American multi-cropping agriculture based on the three sisters, crops of corn, squash, and beans, which, when planted together, form a symbiotic, mutually beneficial relationship. Another notable example is the readoption of other ancient crops like quinoa, an Incan staple for around 5,000 years, which has an extraordinary adaptability to different agroecological regions. Archaeological climate perspectives are not just limited to agriculture. Indigenous community-based ranger groups in Australia have shown how traditional fire management strategies can hugely reduce the risk of catastrophic wildfires of the type currently devastating the Western US and Canada. Recent discoveries regarding the composition of ancient Roman concrete could extend the functional lifespan of concrete as well as contribute to the development of lighter weight concrete forms, which could reduce the environmental impact of cement production, which currently accounts for around 8% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Incorporating ancient architectural techniques into modern building plans, like Persian wind catchers, could help reduce our reliance on heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems to deal with extreme temperatures. The ancient Egyptian Nubian vault, for example, is a method of constructing vaulted roofs using dried mud blocks, and it's making a resurgence in Sahelian Africa, where population growth and rapid deforestation have made it difficult for people to continue to build traditional bush timber and straw roofs. And the recent alternative of importing corrugated iron sheets is now expensive and unsustainable. Resilience theory, which addresses the dynamics of change in adaptive systems, has an important role to play here as well. The study of long-term cycles in the archaeological record and how people adapt to things has helped us highlight continuities, tipping points, and points of resilience. What this amounts to is essentially being able to use 2020 hindsight to look at what we've encountered before, how we dealt with it, and what was the result. Did it go well for us or not? This approach is particularly useful for combining different strands of archaeological data contextualizing why we made certain past decisions, and uncovering the relationships between the natural and cultural transformations that happened as a result. 
this can make a substantial contribution towards planning a sustainable response to global warming and other climate impacts. One of the strengths of using the archaeological record in this way is its cultural diversity, which offers alternatives to the solutions that are currently proposed from within and kind of biased by the Western economy, which might not be viable cross-culturally. It's important to highlight the value of cultural diversity that can provide to resilient solutions to our current climate problem. There is a really excellent paper on this topic from 2021 that was led by Ariana Burke. It's linked in the video description along with a few other sources I used when researching and scripting this video. Ultimately, I hope that you can come away from today with a sense of hope. People have been dealing with and experimenting with solutions to climate change for millennia. And while they haven't always resulted in the complete survival of an entire population, you know, the entire human race has managed to survive to today. <laughs> there are periods in history where we face conditions far worse than what we currently do and survived and even flourished. The impact of climate change on archaeology is a stark reminder of the interconnectedness of our natural and cultural worlds. As we work to mitigate climate change, we're not just saving our future, but also preserving our past. All right, everyone, time to pack up our tools for today. Did you like this video? Is there anything important that I missed? What ancient technology do you think we should be using to help combat climate change? Don't forget to comment, like the video, or subscribe to the channel before you leave. If you're feeling extra generous, you can give me a super thanks or go to my Ko-fi page and support me with a small donation. I'm currently saving up to try and get a new camera. If you have a minute, go have a look at my Redbubble shop and get a sticker, t-shirt, hat, or mug with your favorite archaeology slogan. Taking a few seconds to subscribe, like, share, or support me in any way that you can helps grow the channel and promotes quality heritage content that is well sourced, researched, and presented by someone who is an expert in this subject. It shows the algorithm that people are interested in real archaeology not just pseudoscience or clickbait. Thank you so much for watching. Stay curious, and I hope to see you on my next adventure into the world of archaeology.